Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on that docket today? We had some really interesting things happen at the end of the day. Now, what you'll hear many, many traders, and they're right, say over time is it's not how they open the market. It's not necessarily how they trade throughout the trading day, but more importantly, it's how they close them. Well, that's important, but there's more to the story that they don't tell you. What is it that they may have been like today trying to do into the closing bell? What is it that was important? What price level is important? What are the reasons why it's important that makes it interesting what they did into the day, not only how they closed them. You're going to want to get out your sticky notes for this one because it applies to intraday trade levels. It applies to daily charts, swing trades, weekly charts. All charts act and react the same way. I've been teaching that for many years. I'm going to show you another example in this video of how that worked and what they did into the closing bell. We'll get to that in a few moments. First, let's take the assessment from a big picture perspective of the daily chart. What do we have on the board? The market is in a pullback mode from last Thursday when the traders in the live room shorted the tape up at 523.50. You see the blue line up here? That's where... We shorted as a group in the live room, the market, the SPY, 523.50. Most of the traders and most of the trade was covered yesterday when they gapped down at the open. However, there are some traders still holding a trailer. Now, the SPY is still in an uptrend. This is a pullback situation on very light volume, low participation Above all the moving averages, the trend remains your friend. Now, one of the things that the market loves to do, does it all the time, up and down, it comes back to retest former breakout and former breakdown areas. That's what's interesting about today. So let's narrow that down a little bit and let's learn something right out of the chute. Here's a snapshot of the hourly chart. Now I wanna point out a few important things. So you'll notice over here where the market ran up to this spot, the market by having price get rejected at that spot told us, we're not telling the market, I'm not telling you, you're not telling your neighbor Joe, the market is telling us that that price level was important by the fact that it got rejected there and it came all the way down. Therefore, once the market gets above that price, and let's demark that area. This particular one is 518.22, demarked by this horizontal trend line. And then, of course, you have one just below. This area here that comes in just below is also considered a breakout area. You see where the market was rejected from there, pulled back. They're very close to each other. That creates somewhat of a zone from where I sit. So we'll just say for argument's sake, somewhere between 518 and 517 and a quarter, about a dollar spread, is a zone where the market should find garden variety of support, fight that level, bull bear battle, and when tested, you're likely to get at least from a minimum an intraday bounce back in the other direction. Now that's the concept. What happens tomorrow? Well, they traded down into that price, came up short, but ran out of time on the day, traded down into that area. Sometimes they come up short, other times they spike them through. The low of day today was 518.40, so they came up 18 cents short from a rounding error perspective, a concept perspective, a philosophical perspective. They came down to the most recent breakout area and that's where they pretty much end the day. What happened once they got there, even after four o'clock? Well, let's take a look at the MES. And you see here on the hourly chart, 
the MES from the low has already bounced up. It's a little more prevalent on a five minute chart. Here's the low, here's the MES that you see is still trading as I make this video. And they're bouncing up away from that area. They're up about 10 points, eight points, nine points, roughly 80 cents, 90 cents a dollar in the SPY, give or take. Therein lies, and even though they ran out of time on the day, this isn't a bona fide trade into the end of the day. The point is, is once they got there, sometimes they come up short, other times they spike them through. They found support, the bull bear battle ensued. They didn't get there, but they started bouncing back in the other direction. And from a trading perspective, let's say this was the morning session. Let's say it was posted on the board for inside the number members. And in the live room, we're doing this live. This would have been an area. We would have had traders beginning to get long right around that 518.22 give or take spot. And some of them that would have got in early front ran the actual number by pennies. And we do have traders that do that. They would have already gotten a base hit in their pocket. These areas are important. All charts act and react the same way. Any material change on the weekly chart? No, considerably above all the moving averages, namely home base or the 20 period moving average and above our very important trend line. Once above the trend line, spiking through the trend line, took them three weeks to get through the trend line. It's not uncommon. In fact, it's normal garden variety market behavior to come back to run a test of the trend line. Doesn't mean that happens tomorrow, but that would be normal garden variety stuff to run a test of that trend line. The test is this. Are the bulls strong enough to keep price above the trend line and stay bullish? Or are the bears too strong pushing price back below the trend line and that ends the current rally and then we start looking lower once below the 20 period moving average and the trend line you're in the midst of a and on the cusp of a real bona fide type of corrective move if that should happen. I would put this stuff on a sticky note if I was in your shoes. Let's look at a 15 minute chart. For example, there's a method to the madness. You see the range today. So forget about the last dip in the afternoon. Okay, this is into the end of the day. Nobody... I'm training, at least, is trading that into the end of the day. There's no time left on the clock. That's not what we do here. We trade the morning session when there's participation in the market, and we have a beat on the numbers with time left on the clock. But when you look inside of these parallel lines here, this is where the market was all day, a very narrow range, not a trader's tape once again. It was yesterday repeated all over again. Look at the trend lines or the channel from yesterday same exact routine just slightly down farther on the chart but the same narrow range not a trader's tape you have to take the market at face value and take her for what she is a narrow range there's really no bona fide trade especially with time running out on the clock in the afternoon why do i bring that up because there was nothing doing for the most part inside the numbers and in the live room today not from an S&P perspective. Everything's in here. You can pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. It's all in here. They didn't do any of this stuff in the early session. We were waiting patiently. They made a couple of attempts, but they never really did get there. Pause them, read them, go back to the chart and double check the work. By the way, what follows low volatility in the market? Forget about the last... 10 or 15, 20 minutes of today, think in terms of, generally speaking, the last couple of days have been real light volatility, narrow range. Look for range expansion coming up, higher volatility. That's the way things work. Also, one more thing of note, we have a short week this week. We have a three-day holiday weekend. And of note, how many times, and you can go back and count for yourself, how many times does the market trade down into a three-day holiday weekend? Of course, it happens. It can happen. But the majority of time, the market is a floating type situation into a three-day holiday weekend. You have Good Friday and Easter coming up. 
and therefore we're not guaranteeing a float. We're saying watch out for the float just because they finished down a buck today on the SPY doesn't mean they can't float them up into Thursday, the end of the week, the three-day holiday weekend. It's also the end of month, end of quarter situation. Maybe some of these are old wives' tales, maybe they're not, but these are informational pieces that we should know as traders, investors, as market participants. We also talked yesterday and we'll talk again today about the next tinfoil hat event coming up April 8th, full solar eclipse. We'll watch for the market trading up or down into that particular time frame. But wait, there's more. So when you think about that for a second, you say, all right, April 8th. So now we're into April in that concept with the next tinfoil hat event, full on solar eclipse, markets melting up for the large part. Forget about the last couple of days. She's in a very strong uptrend. If in fact that particular type of event was going to mark a shift, for a corrective move in the market. Let's say that marked a high. It's a hypothetical situation. What else do you have to hang your hat on? How about the monthly chart? The monthly chart will then be in an on-time type of situation. Now, monthly charts take a long time to play out. They take months to play out, but that doesn't mean we can't see some kind of a topping formation and we're due. And I know nobody thinks the market's ever going to go down again. She's going to melt up forever. The price targets have all been raised. All that stuff. I get all that. But I've been around here a long time, been doing this a long time. Those of you that have been watching these videos a long time know that these things do come to an end. There is a corrective move. And then the uptrend may resume again. But that's the way the market works but they pull the rug out when people least expect it, when there's no bears left in the market. April is an on-time type of situation. It's a full-on solar eclipse. It's worth knowing about, worth watching, worth putting down on a sticky note. What's going on over in Camp IWM? So they finished down 37 cents, but that's not really the whole story. They were leading the market in the upward direction today, relative strength, but finished on the lows of day. Now, they're above all the moving averages, but they're teetering right above and have been eating time off the clock for three days now above home base or the 20-period moving average. That said, the 20-period moving average isn't necessarily a bona fide support price. It's more of a guideline when she's been back and forth and hovering right over it. Therefore, giving up the 20-period moving average will open the door for a leg lower. The next number I have on the board in that presumably leg lower, if they do that hypothetical leg lower, is 202.15. Write that down. Put it on a sticky note. Put things in larger picture perspective. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the chart, the weekly chart of the IWM. In an uptrend, grinding up back and forth is Normal garden variety market behavior. When looking at a weekly chart, you say, well, the back and forth can be seen better on a daily chart. This is noise that's not necessarily seen in total on the weekly chart. Transports also finished on the lows today above all the moving averages. So trend is your friend. However, there's a gap here. Come below that gap, below the moving averages, and there's a big time breakup candle they can trend toward the low, 15,500, give or take, in a flash. Beware, the transports is my second favorite market leading indicator, but a number one canary in the coal mine, getting below the convergence of the 50 and the 20 period moving average, blue and red trend lines right here, will open the door for a leg lower. And if that's happening, the rest of the market is likely following suit. Increasing volume on the ride down, Beware of the canary in the coal mine. What about the Q people? Above the moving averages, same routine. Finished on the lows, same routine. Give up the 20 period moving average, almost same routine. Because there's an important number at 438.55, that sticky note material. Start getting below that and closing below that. That's trouble for the 50 period moving average. But below the 20 period moving average, they could be just heading a little bit lower. 438.55 is an important place. It is expected to be 
give or take, a intraday bounce type of place, and that is also sticky note material. What about the financials in terms of the XLF? Back and forth is fine. Above all the moving averages is bullish. It's in an uptrend. Down for a day, two, three, or four isn't the end of the world. It doesn't change the trend. What would change the trend is getting below the 20 period moving average. Why do I know that? Because there's an important number right there. And if you give up that important number or recapture it on the downside, and we'll just use the 20 period moving average as our tour guide or guideline, getting below that will not be good for the bull case. That will open the door for the bear case for a leg lower. Not all 20 period moving averages are created equal. What about smash mouth? Remember, semis are a pretty good proxy for the tech space and all the same market applies, meaning if tech's going down, meaning the Qs, then the spiders are probably going down and vice versa. Dow's going down, IWM or the Russell's going down. If anything's moving large, they're going in the same direction. Same goes for in the upward direction. Now, here's what we have here. And this is of note. We got a couple of things working and it's interesting information. It's a good learning opportunity. Remember the reversal candle from the 8th of March. That's still holding true. They've done about a 50% retrace up that candle. Now, what are they doing? They're eating time off the clock. That's not the tool I wanted to use. That's the one I wanted to use. Just a line through it. They're eating time off the clock. Are they eating time off the clock after a move up to challenge the breakdown candle high or at least in the vicinity? We talked about this last night. That is certainly possible. However, from a bigger picture perspective, what's more dominant? Well, the bigger time frames are more dominant. The bigger time frame moving averages are more dominant. Everything is more dominant the larger the scale that you're looking at. You have a weekly reversal situation on volume, tail candle, sign or signal of a trend change. One of them, I teach that in my course, Lazy E-Mini Trader. So you have a daily reversal, you have a weekly reversal. So while from a daily chart perspective, this could certainly be eating time off the clock for a move higher, can one be short the SMH against this high that was made, 239.14, daily and preferably weekly closes above that? That's really where that trade setup is incorrect. They can retrace more, they can run a test to the top, but closing candles above that high would be the abnormal thing to do with this chart setup. If they should start down, it's likely the other markets are following. Remember, Smash Mouth or the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index is a good proxy for the tech space as a whole. And without tech, the rest of the market is not necessarily going to run away on the upside. Sure, markets can broaden out. They do broaden out. They have been broadening out. They do broaden out in the past. They will broaden out in the future. But without tech, it's unlikely to see big moves in either direction. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.